Hello and welcome to this Beyond Shakespeare exploring session. I'm your host Robert Crichton and uh, we are looking today at a new interlude called Thersites. This interlude following doth declare how that the greatest boasters are not the greatest doers. Though I am hopeful that everyone in this, this online virtual assembly are all wonderful doers uh, and uh, in a moment I'll be introducing them all. The play, uh, if you've been following uh, the videos that we've been doing this week, uh, is a little later than uh, the last two that we did, Youth and Hicks Corner. Uh, they, they were around uh, 15, uh, 13 off the top of my head, um, whereas this is uh, dated around 1537. So time has passed and the the nature of this entertainment is uh, decidedly more secular uh, it may or may not have been uh, uh, written uh, by a, uh, a uh, chap called uh, Nicholas Udall but we can't be absolutely certain because we only know for certain that one of the things what he wrote um, people have sort of tried to piece things together and I don't really do authorship issues like that very much um, it is hopefully going to be rather fun and uh, as I mentioned it is an interlude or an interlude um, uh, which uh, we were discussing before we went live is uh, best described as a general entertainment of some sort um, uh, not necessarily a, uh, a, a desperately long one in this case it's probably when performed orbiting an hour maybe slightly less but we will be stopping and starting as we go. But let us introduce the team of readers and going around the room. Who's playing Thersites? Introduce yourself. Me, sir. Me, sir. Hello. My name's Simon Nader and I'm an actor, director and a drama teacher. Excellent. Thersites there. And uh, Mater, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Stephanie and I'm also a theatre director and um, performer early mod of early modern stuff and um and i teach and i'm here to play along excellent so that is the mother of the group and who is playing the smith mulciber that would be uh i uh hi i'm emily um i'm an actor teaching artist and a scholar of all things early modern theater Marvellous. And uh, reading the, the night, uh, Miles is... I'm, I'm Stephen Longstaff. I'm um, an academic by trade, thinking about late medieval and early modern theatre, and I'm also an enthusiastic participant for the last 30 years in this kind of thing. And last but definitely not least, except possibly in height, uh, playing the child, <laughs> Telemachus, <laughs> I, uh, is... Uh, hello, my name is uh, Joseph Hartson. Uh, I'm a writer and actor and uh, a current MA student at Oxford Brooks. <laughs> and you may see also on the feed that there are, are various uh, potential audience loitering in the background who we might try and coax out when we discuss the text uh, when we get to things. We're going to attempt to read uh, a good 80 or so lines before I, I, I stop the action in uh, uh but then you know me i'll probably jump in randomly <laughs> um i will try not to interfere um apologies for that um we will begin with a stage direction and i will read <coughs> these as we go um but you're going to be introduced first to thersites the title character will will say hello thersites cometh in first having a club upon his neck. <laughs> Thanks for that build up there. <laughs> <laughs> Blue plastic build up, who'd have thought it? You can have a red one if you'd rather. <laughs> no, that's right. It's, oh, actually, yes, that's rather, I prefer the red, thank you. It's, okay, uh, enter Thersites. Having a rough, rough fourth of the Greek land called Thersites, if ye will me know. A back, give me room. In my way do you not stand, for if you do, I will soon lay you low. In Homer of my acts ye have read, I trow, neither Agamemnon nor Ulysses I spared to cheek. 
They could not bring me to be at their beak. Of late from the siege of Troy, I returned, where all my harness, except this club, Hugh Robert, I lost. <laughs> In an old house there, it was quite burned while I was preparing victuals for the host. I must needs get me new whatsoever it cost. I will go seek adventures, for I cannot be idle. I will hamper some of the knaves in a bridle. It grieveth me to hear how the knaves do brag. But by supreme Jupiter, when I am harnessed well, I shall make the dastards to rend into a bag to hide them from me as for the devil of hell. I doubt not, but hereafter of me, ye shall hear tell. How I have made the knaves for to play out quail. But now, to the shop of Mulciber to go. I will not fail. Mosiba must have a shop made in the place, and Thersites cometh before it, saying aloud, Mosiba, whom the poets doth call the god of fire, smith unto Jupiter, king over all, come forth of thy office I thee desire, and grant me my petition. I ask the thing but small. I will none of thy lightning that thou art wont to make for the gods supernal, for ire when they do shake, with which they thrust the giants down to hell that were at a convention heaven to buy and sell. But I would have some help of Lemnos and Ithalia, that of their steel, by thy craft, Condator Mehi Galea. What, fellow Thersides, do you speak Latin now? Nathan, farewell, I make God a vow, I do you not understand, no Latin is in my palate. And then he must do as he would go away. I say abide, good Mosib, I, I pray thee, make me a salad. Why, Thersides, hast thou any wit in thy head? Wouldst thou have a salad now? All the herbs are dead. Besides that it is not meet for a smith to gather herbs and salads to meddle with. Go get thee to my lover Venus. She hath salads enough for all of us. I eat none such salads, for now I wax cold. And for my stomach, they are very cold. Now I pray to Jupiter that thou die a cuckold. I mean a salad with which men do fight. It is a small tasting of a man's might that he should, for any matter, fight with a few herbs in a platter. No great lord should follow that victory. God's passion, Mulciba! Where is thy wit and memory? I would have a salad made of steel. Why, sir, in your stomach long you shall it feel, for steel is hard for to digest. Man's bones and size, he is worse than a beast. I would have a salad to wear on my head, which under my chin, with a throng, red, excuse me, with a thong, red buckle shall be. Dost thou yet perceive me? Your mind now, I see. And I'm just going to pause us there. Um, not quite 80 lines, but not far off. Um, now, I'm just wondering, and I don't know if anyone in the room has an idea here. So obviously, sell it as helmet. Uh, is that a common term for helmet at the time? Because this, it, otherwise, it feels an awfully ra laboured bit of wordplay. A salad wasn't actually invented, I think, until the fifteenth century. Fun enough, so it's contemporary to the play, and certainly not to <laughs> Grecian myth and legend. <laughs> <laughs> is that your fight training knowledge coming in there? Sir? That is my fight training knowledge, in fact. <laughs> Excellent. That, 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 thank you for answering the, the, the question so so swiftly. Um, it's just as a joke. It's it, it it's it's something that we will lose. I think today it's very difficult to get. A, we can get the joke once the joke is technically passed. It's um, I feel for the audience um, unless we sort of explain the joke before they mm. come in. Um, you needed prop lettuce, really, didn't you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I I I think we understand that there's a wordplay issue. It's just <laughs> we don't know what the, the the origin of what you're asking for is, and it's it's almost we need a line saying I mm. want a helmet my new salad, <laughs> um, just to hammer it home before we go. Oh, that's mm. lots of energy. I will, uh, any, uh, uh, anybody, uh, any additional thoughts before we, uh, we crack on? No, marvelous, mm. let us crack on then. Uh, Mulciber, if I could, uh, you could go from your mind now I see again, please. Uh, mm, of course, your mind now I see. 
Why, thou peevish lad, art thou almost mad, or well in thy wit? Get thee a wallet. What wouldst thou have, a salad? What wouldst thou do with it? I pray thee, good most of it, make no more bones. But let me have a salad made at once. I must do somewhat for this knave. What manner of salad, sir, would ye have? I would have such a one that neither might not main should pierce it through or part it in twain, which neither gunstone nor sharp spear should be able, should be able other to hurt or tear. I would have it also for to save my head, if Jupiter himself would have me dead, and if he in a fume would cast me at his fire, this salad I would have to keep me from his ire. <clears throat> I perceive your mind. You shall find me kind. I will for you prepare. And then he goeth into his shop and maketh a salad for him. <laughs> At the last he saith, Here, Thersides, do this salad wear, and on thy head it bear, and none shall work thee care. Then Mulciper goeth into his shop until he is called again. Presuming some sort of mimey business. <laughs> Now would I not fear with any bull to fight, or with a, a, a ramping lion, neither by day nor night. Oh, what great strength is in my body so lusty, which, for lack of exercise, is now almost rusty. Hercules, in comparison to me, was but a boy. When the band dog Cerberus from hell he bare away, when he killed the lion, Hydra, and the boar so wild, compare him to me, he was but a child. Why, Samson! I say, hast thou no more wit? Wouldst thou be as strong as I? Come, suck thy mother's tit. We knew that <laughs> David, that little elfish boy, should with his sling have taken my life away. Nay, you wish, Goliath. For all his five stones, I would have quashed his little boyish bones. Oh, how it would do my heart much good to see some of the giants before Noe's flood. I would make the knaves to cry, quick! or else with my club their brains I will brick. But, Mulciver, yet I have not with thee do. My head is armed, my neck I would have too, and also my shoulders with some good habergin in, that the devil, if he shot at me, could not enter in, for I am determined great battle to make, except my uh, fumishness by some means may a slake. Buckle on this habergin as fast as thou can, and fear for the meeting of neither beast nor man. If it were possible for one to shoot an oak, this habergin will defend thee from the stroke. Let them throw milestones at thee as thick as hail, yet thee to kill they shall of their purpose fail. Uh, if Malvern should on thy <laughs> shoulders light, they should not hurt them, nor suppress thy might. If Bevis of Hampton, Colburn, and Guy will thee essay, set, th set not by them a fly. To be brief, this habergan shall be safe, both by land and water. Now play the lusty knave. Excellent. And you go back into your shop again. <laughs> um, um, Best so Mountain, uh, wherever the Melvin Hills uh, should fall on thy, uh, should on thy shoulders light. Um, so that's quite a boast. But a lot of chalk. That's a lot. Of, mm. Well, it's also, Mosper um, is very quick. And I'm assuming that mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a sight gag if you go into your shop and it's almost near, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> item. Um, yeah. The it, oh, it, fe it feels like that. I don't know if there's other business that might is 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 potentially there. Um, any thoughts about your armor, sir? Your additional, your new bit of armor, um, the, I, the habergin. Um... Do you know? No, I, I I don't know the habergin actually. You didn't look that one up either. Uh, I'll I have a little look. Yeah. Any I any other thoughts? Some sort of early chainmail or something. I assume it's a breastplate or something. I don't know what I was talking about. It, it just, uh, but I just. If, if I may. No, oh, please this do. Is, oh, this is Glenn. Uh, Hello, Glenn. Just hopping in briefly to let you. It's a, it's a mail Hello. chain. It's a chain mail shirt. Uh, ah, okay. Simon it's... wins. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's interesting. He's being made into like a Spenzerian automaton in a way, isn't he? <laughs> So it, 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 like a knight of old. Yeah. Um, it, 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 elaborate. What? 
Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, what do you mean? Sorry, I was. I was. Uh... No, he's being made into a Spencerian automaton, isn't he? Or one of the creatures. For a moment, I thought you meant Spinoza, and I'm like, how does Spinoza fit in this? But <laughs> no, yeah, it, it is sort of like no, like Spencerian. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that I I absolutely agree. There's sort of like a big, you know. <laughs> epic hero off to off to play it in a huge chronicle of some sort um mm -hmm. but we're slowly building him up all the way there i i definitely agree um i am just uh, ask you the the question simon because you're you're uh, you're you're doing the, the boastfulness very well i'm just wondering how effective uh, thesites <laughs> actually is I, at the moment he's uh, feeling very blue bottle-y to me mm, uh, mm. <laughs> um, yeah he needs uh, swatting doesn't he yeah, he, he he has that sort of um, you know papier-mâché sword. Uh, called he's an to. actor, Robert. He's uh, an actor. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is there's something a bit uh, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. Yeah, about these two, isn't mm. I say so. Yeah. Um, lovely. Okay, it's so, just setting, setting someone yeah. up, isn't it? Sorry to interrupt. Setting yeah. someone up for the for the fall we know is going to come, which, yeah. which of course is brilliant because he is just as a cowardly lion. <laughs> 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 okay, so the smith, then he goeth into his shop again. When I consider my shoulders that so broad be, when the other parts of my body I do behold, I verily think that none in Christianity with me to meddle dare be so bold. Now, have at the lions on Cotswold, I will neither spare for heat nor for cold. Where art thou, King Arthur? and the knights of the round table. Come, bring forth your horses out of the stable. Lo, with me to meet, they be not able. By the mass, they had rather wear a babel. Where art thou, Gawain the courteous, and Kay the cramped? Here be a couple of knights, cowardish and scabbed. Appear in thy likeness, Sir Labius Disconius, if thou wilt have my club light on my head of us. Lo, ye may see, he beareth not the face with me to try a blow in this place. How, sirrah, approach, Sir Lancelot de Lake. What, ready away and for fear quake? Now, he that did thee a knight make thought never that thou any battle shouldst take. If thou wilt not come thyself, some other of thy fellows say, to battle I provoke them, themselves let them defend. Lo, for all the good that ever they see, they will not once set hands to fight with me. Oh, good Lord, how broad is my breast, and strong withal, for whole is my chest. He that should meddle with me should have strewn rest. Behold you, my hands, my legs, and my feet. Every part is strong, portionable, and meat. Think you that I am not feared in field and street? Yes, yes, God won't. They give me the war, or else with my club I make them to fall. Back, knaves, I say to them, then for fear they quake, and take me then to the tavern and good cheer we make. The proctor and his men I make to rend their ways, and some went to hide them in broken haze. I tell you, at a word, I sit not a turd by none of them all. Early and late I will walk, and London streets stalk, spite of them great and small, for I think verily that none in heaven so high, nor yet in hell so low, while I have this club in my hand, can he able me to withstand or me to overthrow. But, Mulsimer, yet I must thee desire to make me brigand irons for mine arms, and then I will love thee as mine own sire, for without them I cannot be safe from all harms. Those once had, I will not set a straw, by all the world, for then I will by or have all my mind, or else by the holy rood I will make them think the devil carrieth them to the wood. If no man will with me battle take a voyage to hell, quickly I will make, and there I will beat the devil and his dame, and bring the souls away, I, I, I fully intend the same. After that in hell I have ruffled so, Straight to old purgatory will I go. I will clean that and so purge it round about that we shall need no pardons to help them out. <laughs> if I have not fight enough this ways, I will climb to heaven and fet away Peter's keys. I will keep them myself and let in a great rout. What? Should such a fisher keep good fellows out? No. 
have here Thersides, big and irons bright, and fear no thou no man manly to fight, though he be stronger than Hercules or Samson, be thou pressed and bold to set him upon, neither Amazon nor Xerxes with their whole rabble, thee to his sail shall find it profitable. I warrant thee, they will flee from thy face, as doth uh and hair from the dogs in a chase. Would not thy black and rusty grim beard, now thou art so armed, make any man afeard? Surely, if Jupiter did see thee in this gear, he would run away and hide him for fear. He would think that Tiaphus the giant were alive, and his brother Ensaltus? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, again with him <laughs> to strive, if that Mars, of battle, the god stout and bold, in this array should chance thee to behold, he would yield up his sword unto thee, and god of battle, he would say, thou shouldst be. Now, fare thou well, go the world through, and seek adventures, thou art man good anew. Mosiba, while <laughs> the stars shall shine in the sky, and Phaeton's horses with the sun's chariot shall fly, while the morning shall go before noon, and cause the darkness to vanish away soon. While the cat shall love well milk, and while that women shall love to go in silk. While beggars have lice, and cockneys are nice. While partners can lie, merchants can buy, and children cry. While all these last, and more, which I keep in store, I do me faithfully bind thy kindness to bear in mind. But yet, Mosiba, one thing I ask more. Hast thou ever a sword now in store? I would have such a one that would cut stones and pare a great oak down at once. That were a sword, no, even for a nunce. Truly, I have such a one in my shop that will pare ah! iron as it were a rope. Have, here it is, a gird to a <laughs> gird it to thy side. Now fare thou well, Jupiter be thy guide. Gramercy, Mulciver, with my whole heart, give me thy hand, and let us depart. I will just pause there. So it's a recurring panto trick, really, this, isn't it, of, of going off, here's the next thing. And I really just want to talk about Mulciver's long speech of, of um, when you're, you're talking about you're bigging up your client. I mean, is money changing hands as part of this? Because that feels like the game here is that you're bigging him up for a sale and that he's, even though there's no mention of money, that, that, that you know, that, that, that feels like a potential thing. I mean, you can't surely be actually threatened to hand <laughs> him armor um, uh, because of the club. Um, I, I just wonder what, the, what is going on uh, in that character exchange. See, actually, I didn't see the money bit at all. I just saw him as, oh my gosh, he's coming back. He's just coming <laughs> back. I got to get him out of here. Okay, then I will talk him up to be as big as possible. Like, he's bigger than the god of war himself. Okay, great. Now, please, please go. Um, maybe maybe these are all your, all your kind of your, your sale items, your discount mm. bin. <laughs> and there's actually some really <laughs> nice stuff in the back. You're just giving it, yeah, there's this sword that's kind of split down the middle mm. and it's a bit bird. <laughs> yeah, I see some potential comedy business as well. I think you, you, you'd have to be giving, like, it's a, it's a soup pot instead of a, instead of a salad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because obviously societies are supposed to be no great intellect uh, historically. Um, so, so maybe he's basically he's being gaslit. <laughs> I, it's, it's mighty if, if sword, it's a butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> see, I would like to actually see like the 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 salad actually be like a salad bowl maybe or something. <laughs> like that would be just perfect for my Brilliant. ideal staging. So turn out the salad in it and then just shake it off while first I, and then just hand it ah, just a thing for a king. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're you're basically making lunch. Um, and you're just hand, <laughs> handing all the implements over um, from, you know, from just the other, the other room, as it were. Listen, he just came in during my lunch break, so the, the, the best I can do to, like, get him out before, like, he can cut into my mealtime, like, 
the better. So <laughs> that's going to be my motivation. If anyone stages this, you now have to do this. That's yeah, I don't. Uh, I've, yeah, you can have that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm sticking by that. Um, and it, I'm, and if 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 someone else plays it, I'm just going to tell them that. Just, just play it during your. Just play it as though it's lunchtime. That's that's all you need. I guess for it. Uh, any any other thoughts before we 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 go we we move forward and um, with because uh, we're going to have a different character introduced in just a moment's time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, any additional thoughts before we go? Can I this? can I just say, I I think this is why I always fall in love with like early mon drama again because you see lines like I set not a turd and you're just. <laughs> I'm just surprised and always, because again, you're always thinking, oh, God, what were those people thinking and writing about? And no, they'll throw in the occasional uh, uh, defecation joke, you know, <laughs> just for laughs. Well, I mean, if it is written by um, uh, the, the, the person it could be, um, who could also have written uh, 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 various uh, plays that we've orbited around recently, Things to do with turds and and uh, uh, etc. It's very much in currency at the time. You know, there's a, there's an awful lot of turd turd jokes uh, turning over. They're always really fun. Um, <laughs> Simon satire. Simon's dealt with quite a lot of turds um, in the last year uh, <laughs> acting these things. <laughs> and he's not just talking about people in the cast. <laughs> oh. not this cast. <laughs> okay. Um, it's... On that bombshell. <laughs> On that matter, yes. Let us let us move let us move rapidly forward. I, with a stage direction, I think. Did we get to? Um, we did. Yeah. We did indeed. So uh, stand by, uh, mother. Um, Mulsba goeth in to his shop again, and Thersites saith forth. Now I go hence and put myself in priest. I will seek adventures. Yea. And that I will not cease. If there be any present here this night that will take upon... I'll start that again. If there be any present here this night that will take upon them with me to fight, let them come quickly and the battle shall be fight. Where is... Cacus? Cacus, would we say? Hmm. Do we want a cheap, cheap gag in there? Um, I mean... Are you equating it, turd and cacus? I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it could it could be a, a a proper name, but also it feels like it could just be a cheap gag. I mean, um, I have an extremely juvenile sense of humor, so I always <laughs> go vote that. But that's just vote me. vote for Cacus now. Cacus is so carried. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Cacus? That knave not worth a crook. That was wont to blow clouds out of his throat, which stole Hercules' kine and hid them in his cave. Come hither, Cacus. Thou lover and false knave, I will teach all wretches by thee to beware. If thou come hither, I trap thee in a snare. Thou shalt have not bread and ill fare. How say you, good godfather, that looks so stale? Ye seem a man to be born in the vale. Dare ye adventure with me a stripe or two? <laughs> go, coward, go. Hide thee as thou was wont to do. What sort of dastards have we here? None of you to battle with me dare appear? No. What say you, heart of gold, of countenance so demure? Will you fight with me? No. No! <laughs> I am right sure. By blush not, woman, I will do you no harm, except I had you sooner to keep my back warm. <laughs> Alas, little pums, why are you sore afraid? I pray you, show how long it is since you were a maid. Tell me in mine ear, sirs, he hath me told. That gone was her maiden head at thirteen years old. <laughs> By lady, she was loved to keep it too long. And I were a maid again, now maybe his song. <laughs> Do after my counsel of maidens the whole baby. Quickly, rid your maiden heads, for they are vengeance heavy. Well, let all go. Why, will none come in with me to fight that I may tear his skin? Thersites stand up there working the audience. Um, uh, <laughs> lots of potential improvisation to go with that, depending on what the audience is doing. Um, and it does look like you've got a, a decent selection that you can, you can work from, um, uh, giving a suggestion of what they, th that it is a wide uh, selection of people in the audience um, <laughs> available. 
for you to torment. You seem to have a... a... <laughs> okay, we will, however, let mother come in and I will stop talking. So, the mater <laughs> cometh in. What say you, my uh. son? Will you fight? God, a defend? For what cause to war do you now pretend? Will you commit to battles dangerous your life that is to me so precious? I will go, I will go. Stop not my way. Hold me not, good mother, I heartily you pray. If there be any lions or other wild beasts that will not suffer the husbandman and reast, I will go seek them and bid them to a feast. They shall abide bitterly the coming of such a beast. I will search for them both in bush and shrub and lay on a load with this lusty club. Oh, my sweet son, I am thy mother. Wilt thou kill me, and thou hast none other? No, mother, no! I am not of such iniquity that I will defile my hands upon thee. <laughs> but, be, but be content, mother, for I will not rest till I have fought with some man or wild best. Truly, my son, if that ye take this way, this shall be the conclusion. Mark what I shall say. Other, I will drown myself for sorrow, and feed fishes with my body before tomorrow, or with a sharp sword, surely I will me kill. Now, thou mayst save me, if it be thy will. I will also cut my paps away, that gave thee suck so many a day. And so in all the world it shall be known, that by my own son I was overthrown. Where am I? <laughs> therefore, I've if my life... I've lost my son, I've lost my line, therefore, <laughs> Mother, if my life no. be to thee pleasant. That which I desire, good son, do me grant. Mother, thou spendest thy wind but in waste. The goddess of battle, her fury on me hath cased. I am fully fixed, battle for to taste. Oh, how many to death I shall drive in haste. I will ruffle this club about my head. Or else, I pray God, I may never die in my bed. There shall never a stroke be stroken with my hand, but they shall think that Jupiter doth thunder in the land. My own sweet son, I, kneeling on my knee, and both my hands holding up to thee, desire thee to cease, and no battle make, call to thee patience, and better ways take. Tush, mother, I am deaf, I will need, I will thee not hear, no. No, if Jupiter, him, if Jupiter here himself now were, and all the gods, and Juno his wife, and loving Minerva that abhorreth all strife, if all these, I say, would desire me to be content, they did their wind, but in vain spent. I will have battles in Wales or in Kent, and some of the knaves I will auto rent. Where is the valiant knight, Sir Eisenbrah? Appear, sir, I pray you. Dare ye not show your face? Where is Robin John and Little Hood? Approach hither quickly <laughs> if ye think it good. I will teach such outlaws with Christ's curses how they take hereafter away abbot's purses. Why will no adventure appear in this place? Where is Hercules with his great mace? Where is Bucyrus that fed his horses? Fall like a tyrant with dead men's courses. Come, any of you both, and I make an oath. That ere I eat any bread, I will drive away, yea, for ye twain, between your body and your head. This passeth my brains, will none take the pains to try me with a blow? Oh, what a fellow am I, whom every man doth fly, that doth me but once know. Son, all do you fear that be present here? They will not with you fight. You, as you be worthy, have now the victory without tasting of your might. <laughs> Here is none, I trow, that proffereth you a blow. 
man, woman, no child. Do not set your mind to fight with the wind. Be not so mad nor wild. Shh, I say, arise, whoever will fight. I am to battle here, ready dight. Come hither, other swain or knight. Let me see who dare present him to my sight. Here, with my club ready, I stand. If any will come to take them in hand. There is no hope left in my breast to bring my son into better rest. He will do nothing at my request. He regardeth me no more than a beast. I see no remedy, but still will pray to God my son to guide in his way, that he may have a prosperous journeying and to be safe at his returning. Son, God above grant this my oration that when in battle thou shalt have consultation with your enemies, either far or near, no wound in them nor in you may appear, so that ye neither kill nor be killed. Mother, thy petition, I pray God, be fulfilled, for then no knave's blood shall be spilled. Fellows, keep my counsel. By the mass I do but crake, I will be gentle enough and no business break, but yet I will make her believe that I am a man. Think you that I will fight? No, no, but with a cat. Except I find my enemy on this wise, that he be asleep or else cannot arise. Uh, if his arms and his feet be not fast bound, I will not proffer a stripe for a thousand pound. Farewell, mother, and tarry here no longer, for after prowess of chivalry, I do both thirst and hunger. I will beat the knaves as black as a conger. <laughs> And then the mother goeth in the place which is prepareth for her, where we will just take a brief pause because lots and lots of things happening in there. Again, playing the audience. Um, but what's the game that the mother is doing throughout this? Because, um, you know, how, how seriously um, is she afraid for her child's life? How over the top is uh, her reactions and 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 where is that all pitched um thoughts please from the room well she seems to be hyperventilating pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a volumnia who who doesn't want to really test her son yet but kind of pleads with him and you could i guess you could totally take it the other way but um yeah she seems she seems to want to play the weak one yet so she isn't chased in a way. <laughs> it feels like she's laying on all the emotional guilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, that old, that old classic mother tactic. <laughs> ah, yes. Works its charm. Yes. We're, 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 not, we're not suggesting in any way that there's any therapy required there. Yeah. Um, uh, so <laughs> um, you know, it's it's just that thing. She, but she's also messaging your ego. You know, son, they dare not fight you. You know, oh, you're too strong and too powerful. Every tactic, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you, you, you know, you want to go for Robin, uh, Robin, John, and little, uh, uh, and, and and little hood. I mean, it's yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, and we have touched on the the extent uh, Robin Hood little um, playlets that um, exist. Uh, one a little earlier and uh, a couple a little later than this so uh, you know they're very much in currency it's a good it's a good reference as good a reference then as it is now um, and that's it that's that should get a decent laugh out of the audience any <laughs> any additional thoughts now that mother has been been sent packing I couldn't help thinking of EastEnders this is the old bit <laughs> isn't it He's, he's, he's raring to go and, and Babs comes along and goes, no, son, leave it. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Leave him. <laughs> God, I can't unsee it now. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm approaching my, some of my favourite stage directions. So uh, uh, this, this is uh, what I'm, I, I, the moment I've been waiting for. So um, anyway, your mother goeth in mm. the place that is prepared for her. We'll, we'll get the last easy paragraph out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? How long shall I tarry? Be your hearts in your hose. Will then none of you in battle me oppose? Come, prove me. 
why stand you so in doubt? Have you any wild blood that ye would have let out? Alack, that a man's strength cannot be known, because that he lacketh enemies to be overthrown. Here a snail must appear unto him, and he must look fearfully upon the snail, <laughs> saying, <laughs> But what a monster do I see now? Coming hitherward with an armored brow, armed brow. What is it? Ah, it is a sow. No, by God's body, it is but a gristle. And on the back, it has never a bristle. It is not a cow. Ah, there I am. For then it should have a, a long tail. What the devil? I was blind. It is but a snail. I was never so afraid in east nor in south. My heart at the first sight was at my mouth. Marry, sir. Fie, fie, fie. I do sweat for fear. I thought I had craked, but too timely here. Hence, thou beast, and pluck in thy horns. Oh, I swear by him that crowned was with thorns, I will make thee drink worse than good ale in the corns. Hast thou nothing else to do but come with horns and face me so? <laughs> How thou, my serpent, shield and spear, and let us worry and kill this monster here. <laughs> uh, okay, before we move forward, I, I just want to ask the room, on what scale is this snail? Because it's I got mean, to be I'd... seen by the audience, presumably. <laughs> yes, that's my side. Like, I want, like, an actor to, like, have, like, a little puppet and just be, like, it's the <laughs> smallest little snail on stage that you could see. Like, but it's still visible. Mm. I mean, that, that's, that's my deal. Um, any, any <laughs> thoughts? Could it be, could it be no, the sorry. old Father Ted joke as well that it's he, he can't <laughs> actually tell if it's close to him or far away? <laughs> <laughs> it yes? should be the snail from Sesame Street, um, but um, so sort of with a with an actor inside, sort of that size, like really big but totally harmless. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was saying, I don't know if any of you guys remember Spitting Image, but I'm trying to remember who it was now that was the snail. Was it, was it Douglas Hurd? If you remember Spitting Image. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't remember. It was some, some Tory minister <laughs> anyway, but uh, that, that would be my, my <laughs> ideal. <laughs> Great. Chewing on a lettuce leaf, leaf later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what fat <foul> mucus. <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, you know, because if you make the snail too big, then then he sort of has a legitimate reason, if not to be afraid, right. but to be really freaked out. So mm. it, it has to be, it, it's that sort of balancing act between visible um, and and comic, but not too small, but um, but nobody gets it. Uh, line of sight, presumably, isn't actually very good in the original, mm. original staging. Um, so um, maybe with that Sesame Street idea of maybe you've got a brick wall or something that it's going along. Um, <laughs> anyway, we now have the entrance of the soldier here, Miles cometh in. Is not this a worthy knight? If a snail dareth not fight, except he have his servant's aid, sister the champion that makes all men afraid. I am the poor soldier, come of late from Callis. I trust there I go to debate some of his malice. I will tarry my time. Till I do see betwixt him and the snail what the end will be. Why, ye horse and knaves, regard ye not my calling? Why do ye not come and with your weapons bring? Why shall this monster so escape killing? No, that he shall not, and God be willing. I promise you this is as worthy a knight as ever shall bread out of a bottle bite. I think he be Jerry's of whom Virgil doth write, that would not let Entellus alone, but ever provoked and ever called on, but yet at the last he took a fall. And so within a while I trow I make thee shall. By God's passion, knaves, if I come, I will you fetter. Regard ye my calling and crying no better. Why, whore son, I say, will ye not come? By the mass the knaves be all from home. They had better have fed me an errand at Rome. I may trough, I think they're very scant, this lubber dare adventure to fight with an ant. Well, seeing my servants come to me will not, I must take heed that this monster me spill not. I will jeopard with it a joint, and other with my club, or my sword's point. 
I will reach it such wounds as I would not have for forty thousand plumes. Pluck in thy horns, thou unhappy beast. What, facest thou me? Would thou, would not thou be in rest? Why, wilt not thou thy horns in hold? Thinkest thou that I am a cockold? God's arms, the monster cometh toward me still, except I, 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 except I fight manfully. It will me surely kill. Uh, then he must fight <laughs> against the snail with his club. Jupiter, look. Dost thou not see and hear how he feareth the snail as it were a bird? Well, with my club I have had good luck. Now with my sword have I thee a pluck. Ah. And he must cast his club away. I will make thee, ere I go, for to duck, and thou were as tall a man as Friar Tuck. I say yet again, thy horns in draw, or else I will make thee to have wounds raw. Art thou not afeard to have thy beard paired with my sword? Here he must fight then with his sword against the snail, and the snail draweth <laughs> her horns in. Ah, well, now no more, thou mightiest have done so before. I laid at it so sore that it thought it should have been law, and it had not drawn in its horns again. Surely I would the monster have slain. But now, farewell. I will work thee no more pain. <laughs> now my fume is past, and doth no longer last, that I did to the monster cast. Now in other countries, both far and near, more deeds of chivalry I will go in queer. Thou needst not seek any further. Ready I am here. I will debate anon, I trow thy bragging cheer. Now where is any more that will me assail? I will turn him and toss him both top and tail. If he be stronger than Samson was, who with his bare hands killed lions apace. What needeth this boast? I am here at hand. That with thee will fight, keep thy head and stand. Surely for all thy high words I will not fear, to assay thee a touch till some blood appear. I will give thee somewhat for the gift of a new year. And he beginneth to fight with him, but Thersites must run away and hide him back behind his mother back saying. But before that oh, happens, mother, mother. before that happens. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing snail puppet theatre there. That just happened spontaneously. Oh, um, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Perfect. It's got to be. It's got to be quite an elaborate puppet as well, uh, to some degree. It's got to have you know horns coming in. It could just actually be done in that fashion inside a sock, I suppose. But um, <laughs> um, there's some fight choreography here. The snail has. Um, <laughs> uh, are we? Uh, I'm. I'm assuming that the audience has to be going. Oh, you know, and, and <laughs> what are the reactions that we're hoping the audience gets out of this, beyond the fact the audience at this point surely must be going. What the what? Uh, unless they use like a Jedi snail, you know what I mean? <laughs> there are only <laughs> like, Jedi snails. <laughs> yes, like like Yoda in Attack of the Clones, that kind of Jedi snail. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 you know if we, if if ever in the future we have we have a budget you know for CGI that's that's where we're going isn't it for you know Perfect. the, the, the yeah. full on uh, uh, version there. Um, <laughs> lovely, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so um, we have the re-entrance of a mother during this this fight. Uh, it's, it'll be an interesting question actually what the fight choreography would be with Miles as well actually. Um, <laughs> And uh, any any thoughts about uh, about what's happening there? I mean, obviously he just wins very quickly, and you just run away. But uh... I'd say because there's all this gag about Thersites uh, not even seeing him, uh, not hearing him or anything. So I'm assuming you probably just turn, and then at the first <laughs> after building after building yourself up, seeing ah, it's literally just like ah, run away. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Marta's probably quite tall and she'd be getting her paps out <laughs> by now. So there's lots to hide behind now. <laughs> um, Perfect. Run for the hills. <laughs> yes. ro ro rolling up sleeves and things. Um, okay. Um, 
<laughs> so, uh, right. so, so uh, fight sort of doesn't happen. The Cites must run away and hide him behind his mother's back, saying, Oh, mother, mother, I pray thee me hide. Throw something over me and cover me every side. Oh, my son, what thing eldest thee? Mother, a thousand horsemen do persecute me. <laughs> Mary, son, then it was time to fly. I blame thee not, then, though afraid thou be. A deadly wound thou might there soon catch. One against so many is no indifferent match. No, mother, but if they had been but ten to one, I would not have avoided, but set them upon. But seeing they be so many, I ran away. Hide me, mother, hide me, I heartily thee pray. For if they come hither and hear me find to their horse's tail, they will be bind and after that fashion hail me and kill me. And though I were never so bold and stout to fight against so many, I should stand in doubt. <coughs> thou that dost seek giants to conquer, come forth if thou dare and in this place appear. For shame, dost thou so soon take flight? Come forth, show somewhat of thy might. Hide me, mother, hide me, and never word say. Thou old trot, seest any man come this way, well armed and weaponed and ready to fight? No, forsooth, master, there came none in my sight. He did avoid in time, for without doubt I would have set on his back some clouts. If I may take him, I will make all slutches to beware by him, that they come not in my clutches. Then he goeth out, <clears throat> and the mother saith, Come forth, my son, your enemy is gone. <gasps> Be not afraid, for her thou canst have none. Then he looketh about as if he be gone, or no, not at the last, he saith, <clears throat> I wish thou didst wisely, whosoever thou be, to tarry no longer to fight with me. For with my club I would have broken thy skull if thou were as big as Hercules' bull. Why, thou cowardly knave, no stronger than a duck, bearest thou try masteries with me a pluck which fear neither giants nor jupiter's firebolt nor beelzebub the master devil as ragged as a colt <laughs> i would thou wouldst come hither once again i i think thou hadst rather alive to be flain come again and i swear by my mother mother's womb i will pull thee in pieces no more than my thumb and thy brains abroad i will so scatter that all knaves shall fear against me to clatter and we'll just pause there because we're about to have uh, Telemachus come in. And um, so it's a question of where precisely uh, around your mother are you? Were you hiding earlier? Um, <laughs> Probably under the dress? Yeah. Or is it just simply just standing behind her and you're just doing hmm. a sort of shuffling round game? Um, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, options there in terms of physicality of what's going on. How hmm. absurd is the hiding uh, from, from uh, Miles? <laughs> well, it needs to be properly Freudian, doesn't it? I mean, think, <laughs> think, of, think of the Tindrum, yes. like the grass novel, like the film, um, where you have this little boy um, at one point beneath his mum's dress or underneath mm -hmm. and um, sort of lifting it up and, and then underneath her paps as well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a balcony. <laughs> I mean, she's like Volumnia, so she, she yeah. is um, voluptuous. <laughs> um, I say under the dress as well, just because it's the most pathetic way to mm -hmm. make him hide, really, isn't it? Because we have got, you know, the stage direction he looketh about, and, you know, there's a lot of business mm. that could be, could mm. be done there in terms of uh, play, playing for the audience. Um, okay, so then cometh in Telemachus, bringing a letter from his father, Ulysses, and Thersites saith. What, little Telemachus, what makest thou here among us? Sir, my father Ulysses doth commend to you most heartily, and here hath you send of his mind a letter which show you better everything shall than I can make rehearsal. Here he must deliver him the letter. 
Lo, friends, ye may see what great men write to me. Here he must read the letter. As entirely as heart can think, our scrivener can write with ink. I send you loving greeting. Thersites, my own sweeting. I am very sorry when I cast in memory the great unkindness and also the blindness that hath be in my breast against you ever pressed. I have be prompt and diligent ever to make you shent to appall your good name and to diminish your fame. In that I was to blame. But well, all this is gone, and remedy there is none, but only repentance of all my old grievance, with which I did you molest and gave you sorry rest. The cause was thereof truly nothing but very envy. <gasps> Wherefore now, gentle esquire, forgive me, I you desire, and help I you beseech Telemachus to a leech, that him may wisely charm from the worms that do him harm, in that ye may do me pleasure, for he is my chief treasure. I have heard men say that come by the way, that better charmer is no other than is your own dear mother. I pray you of her obtain to charm away his pain. pain. Fare you well and come to my house to drink wine and eat a piece of souse, and we will have minstrelsy that shall pipe hank in Boby. My wife Penelope doth greet you well by me, writing at my house on Candlemas Day, midsummer month, the canons of May, by me, Ulysses, being very glad that the victory of late of the monster ye had. Ha! Sirach quoth he. How say you, friends, all? Ulysses is glad for my favour to call. Well, though we have oft swerved, and he small love deserved, yet I am well content, seeing he doth repent, to let old matters go, and to take him no more so as I have done hitherto for my mortal foe. Come, go with me, Telemachus, I will thee bring unto my mother to have her charming. I doubt not, but by that time that she hath done, thou shalt be the better seven years agone. Then Thersites goeth to his mother, saying, Mother, Christ thee save and see, Ulysses hath sent his son to thee, that thou shouldst him charm from the worms that him harm. Son, ye be wise. Keep you warm. Why should I, for Ulysses do, that never was kind as to? He was ready in war ever thee, son, to mar. Then had been all my joy exiled clean away. Well, mother, all that is past. Wrath may not always last, and seeing we be mortal all, let not our wrath be immortal. Charm that charm will, he shall not be charmed of me. Charm or by the mass with my club I will charm thee. Why, son, art thou so wicked to be thy mother? Yea, that I will, by God's dear brother. Charm, old witch, in the devil's name, or I will send thee to him to be his dame. Alas, what a son have I that thus doth order me spitefully? Cause it be the time that ever I am fed. I would in my belly he had be dead. Cursest thou, old whore, bless me again, or I will bless thee, that thou that shall be to thy pain. Then he must take her by the arms, and she crieth out, as followeth. He will kill me, he will spill me, he will bruise me, he will lose me, he will prick me. He will stick me. The devil stick thee, old withered witch, for I will stick never thee, none, son, none such. But come off. Give me thy blessing again. I say, let me have it, or else certain with my club. I will lay thee on the brain. Well, seeing thou threatenest to me affliction, spite of my heart, have now my benediction. 
Now Christ's sweet blessing and mine light above and beneath the body of thine and I beseech with all my devotion that thou mayst come to a man's promotion. He that forgave Mary Morglan her sin make thee highest of all thy kin. In this word is double intelliment. Wouldst thou have me hanged, mother veriment? No, son, no. But to have you high in promotion is my mind, verily. Well then, mother, let all this go, and charm this child that you is sent to. And the pauses there. Um, just, uh, just simply, just to go over this this sequence yeah. from Telemachus entrance because though i'm sort of following what's going on i i, I have a, in my mind a less strong grip as uh, as to as to the motivation and precisely what's going on um i, I read the worrying for the worm. audience yeah i read the worm and the charm thing as being some sort of some some sort of kind of sexual thing as in ulysses is like um show, show him the ropes <laughs> That's how I read it, but uh, I am what, no what, what are other people getting from this, this, this whole sequence? So uh, Telemachus uh, coming in with the letter from his father, and we get this long letter. Um, and then I think it's uh, actually a, it's a jest. I think it's Ulysses being cruel again because Thersites not being sorry, Thersites not being uh, not being very smart. I think it's um, try and get basically his son to sleep with Thersites' <laughs> mum. That's how I read it. <laughs> I felt the same and definitely I think he takes it like seriously like really seriously and is just like no you have to sleep with him there's no other way you have to and that leads to that argument um <laughs> may I throw a question uh, oh, please do to, yes how would one stage this today because I'm I'm not sure whether if it, when it was staged back then, if it would be played up for laughs or if it would actually be a serious moment. Um, so what would your thoughts be on staging this argument? Um, well, I would certainly throw that to the room. I suspect for the time, I suspect it would be played for laughs. I suspect that the whole thing, I, I don't get the impression that they're changing tones very often. Um, uh, I, it seems all very much on a level, and we're just going from a different skit to a different skit. But uh, no, certainly, the what does the room think? It could have been played by children. Mm. Mm. Yes, would, I mean that's very plausible. Yeah, um, so, you know, which would explain all the kind of classical learning because they they learned plays as part of their training in rhetoric in in grammar schools and in schools like Paul's. So that would give you a, a, another layer where mm. they'd be able to drop into and out of more serious stuff, perhaps. Mm. And I suppose if it was for an audience at court as well, most of them would know the kind of etymology of the story. So I suppose for me in Jokey, I think people might get the whole um, conflict. So I would say comedy as well, personally. Mm. Though, um, you know, again, it's what we, what uh, the question is always, you know, what do we do with it today and where do mm. we, we place the stress and, um, you know, and how do we diffuse things where, when we have situations where we're going, I'm not really sure we want to be doing this sequence or not without mm. doing something with it to, uh, to, to uh, highlight what's going on um, and, and what it's saying. Um, could could I throw in something about the um, the bit at the end of the letter, mm. which is which is just that uh, Candlemas is in February. Uh, so to say I'm writing on Candlemas in midsummer in the calends of May mm. is is just a joke. It's mm. just an impossibility, isn't it? So there's there's a big signal there, and of course he society misses it because he misses everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I mean it's 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 a, it's just as as a as a as a sequence that letter and that point onwards. I just found myself going. I'm not sure if I'm holding on to the plot in the way that earlier, partly because it was very physical, um, 
uh, that I, I, at this point I have. There's the, the first point where I was going, I think I'm following it, but I'm not sure if I am. Um, um, and, you know, that thing that, that uh, Telemachus is, um, is, 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 doesn't, hasn't said very much uh, mm. so far. I apologize, I haven't given you very much to say. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I think we'll, we'll, however, move forward, um, in, unless we have additional thoughts at this time and see where this all goes. One more question. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, oh, I wish I had the line number for this. Uh, that shall <laughs> pipe hen and Bobby? Yeah, so that Hankin baby. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's, it's presumably a a, a song. Um, it, it, ah. and so they'll be singing a song because um, right. they're Lost talking about minstrelsy. So it would be it would be some tune that we probably don't know. I will just have a little look in the footnotes to see if there's a if uh, uh, in the notes um, uh, or play on a recorder uh, a tune that is lost. So yeah, there's a, there's a. It's it's it would be probably known to the audience of some popular tune. Right, thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Suddenly, just sort of covered the climax, the first climax between son and mother, or it's come to a climax between son and mother. Mm. Mm. Um, yes, I'm just trying to figure out where because I stopped you mid mid mid. No, um, yeah. like with this. Um, well then, mother. No, uh, well then, mother. Go from there. Yes. No, yeah. he will stick. Um, he will stick me. Sort of all very sort of punning. Yeah, yeah. no, in, it's in absolutely you, not even. You can't call this innuendo. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no. it's all very, very literal. Um, yeah, you know, which I think leads into the farcical kind of element that the presentation. I would mm. suggest. Um, so, well then, mother. Well then, mother. Well then, mother. Uh, okay. <laughs> Make the highest of all thy kin. Ooh, ooh, where are we? Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, no, well, uh, okay. Well, seeing thou threatenest to me affliction, spite of my heart, have now my benediction. I feel she is totally confused by now. So you've got my benediction. Now Christ's sweet blessing and mine light above and beneath the body of thine. And I beseech with all my devotion that thou mayst come to a man's promotion. He that forgave Mary Magdalene her sin, make thee highest of all thy kin. Is this word, in this word, is double intelligent. Wouldst thou have me hanged, mother? There meant. No, 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 son, no. But to have you high in promotion is my mind. Verily. Well then, mother, let all this go and charm this child that you is sent to. And look hereafter, to curse ye be not greedy. Curse me no more. I am cursed enough already. Well, son, I will curse you no more, except you provoke me to too, too sore. But I marvel why you do me move to do for Ulysses that doth not us love. Mother, by his son, he hath sent me a letter, promising hereafter to be to us better. And you and I, with my great club, must walk to him and eat a syllabub, and we shall make merry and sing tail on the berry with Simkin Sidnum Sumner that killed a cat at Kumna. There the trifling Tabara. Troubler of Tunis will pick Peter Pie Baker a pennyworth of prunes. Nickel never good a net in a nightcap. Knit will for Kit, whose knee caught a nap. David Doty, Diter of Dates, grin with Godfrey Goodale, who greedy at the gate. Tom Tumbler of Tewkesbury, turning at a trice, will wipe William Waterman if he be not wise. Simon Sadler of Sudley, that served the sow. Hit Will Henry Heartless, he heard. Not yet how. Jenkin Jakin, the job Jolly Joan, grind will groanly seed until he groan. Proud Pierce, pick bank, that pick Parnell's purse. Cut will the cakes, though Kate do cry and curse. Rough Robin Rover, ruffling in right rate. Bald Bernard Bramus will beat and Bennett bait. Foolish Frederick Ferberer of a fat. 
Acting Daniel Dainty to Death, Will with a Dart, Mark off Mary Lee's Morning for Matt Mary, Tink Will the Tables, Though He Be There, Not Tarry, Andrew Allnave, Alderman of Antwerp, Hop Will with Hollyhocks and Hark and Humphreys Huff, It Is Too Too Mother, The Pastime and Good Cheer That We Shall See in Ham. When did we come there? Wherefore, gentle mother, I thee heartily pray that thou wilt charm for worms this pretty boy. Well, son, seeing the case and matter stand us so, I am content all thy request to do. Come hither, pretty child, I will thee charm from the worms wild. But first do thou meet thy name tell. I'm called Telemachus, there as I dwell. Telemachus, lie down upright on the ground, and stir not once for a thousand pound. I'm ready, here pressed, to do all you request. Then he must lay him down with his belly upward, and she must bless him <laughs> from above too. Beneath saying as followeth. Thou heard of Comerton with his crooked spade, calls from thee the worm soon to bade, and jolly Jack Tumbler that juggleth with a horn, grant that thy worm soon be all too torn. God, grandsire Abraham, God, mother to Eve, grant that this worms no longer this child grieve. Tinkers are all the court of conscience in cockleshire. Tinkers and taverers, tipplers, taverners, titty pills, triflers, turners and trumpers, tempters, traitors, travellers and thumpers, trifters, thievish, thick and bare too thin. The malady of this worm's calls for to blin. The virtue of the tale of Isaac's cow that before Adam in paradise did low. Also the joist of Moses' rod and the mount of cavalry that spake with God. Facius at fasciem turning tail to tail cause all these worms quickly to fail. The bottom of the ship of Noah and also the leg of the horse of Troy. The peace of the tongue of balance us, the charbone of the ox that at Christ's birth was, the eye tooth of the dog that went on pilgrimage with young Tobias. These worms soon may sue The butterfly of Bromwichum that was born blind, the blast of the bottle that blowed airless wind, the buttock of the bitter board at Buckingham, the body of the bear that with Babas came, the Baxter of Baldockbury with her backing Peel, child, throw thy worms, I pray, may soon thee heal the tapper of Tavistock and the tapster's pot, the tooth of the titmouse, the turd of the goat, and the tower of tennis balls toasted by the fire, the table of Tantalus turned trim in the mire. The tomb of Tom Threadbare that thrust tip through the smoke. Make all thy worms, child, to come forth at thy dock. Shem, come and Japhet, and call the miller's mare. The five stones of David that made Goliath dare, the wing with which St. Michael did fly to his wife. Counters where with cherubim bid cherry stones count, the hook with which Azurus killed the white boar, help that these worms, my child, hurt thee no more. The moor of the moor cock that made Maud to mow when Martimus at Morton mourned for the snow. The spear of Spanish, Spilbury sprint with spiteful spots, 
the lights of the Leverock laid at London lots, the shin bone of St. Samuel shining so as the sun, Grand child of the worms, that soon thy pains be done. Mother Bryce at Oxford, and great Gibber Finksy, also Maud of Thrutton and Mabel of Chertsey, and all other witches that walk in Dimmingsdale, clittering and clattering, bear your pots with ale, Incline your ears and hear this my petition and grant this child of health to have fruition. The blessing that Jordan to his godson gave, light on my child and from the worms him save. Now stand up, little Telemachus, and on. I warrant thee by tomorrow thy worms will be gone. Lovely, lovely. That's a, not a not an easy speech at all. Um, there's lot there's lots of little things there. I don't know if you, I apologise if I was scrabbling about because I was looking for uh, other other sources. Um, all sorts of things come up in there. Uh, Simon, in your sort of recitation of of random names earlier. Um, is very, very similar in places to a fragment of a play called The Prodigal Son, which we have mm. explored on the podcast in the past. Mm. Um, uh, I think there's only one name uh, which I think uh, Mater brings up, um, which is actually the same, because there's a Jenkin jumbler and you've got a Jack jumbler, and there's, various, mm. l there's a list of names that is uh, very, very similar. Um, and uh, that's uh, about uh, mothers and sons uh, in part. We only have a few, a couple of pages of that, of that script. Um, but also looking at the, the long list of various sort of pseudo relics that you're, you're working your magic with is very, very reminiscent of uh, John Hayward's um, uh, uh, relic selling uh, patter stuff that happens in the pardoner and the friar and the four peas um lots of even if they're repurposed um in in slightly different ways there, there's there's lots of little things crossing over to other plays that are very interesting in there mm. um and it's sort of we ease into that where we start off with um looking at very very re serious religious uh themes of you know, adam in paradise um you know Noah, the uh, the story of, uh, uh, but then we got the piece of the tongue of Balaam's ass, um, and, and that's a, uh, and it's a piece of the tongue because Balaam's ass is a talking ass. Um, it's um, it's one of the more obscure elements of the Bible. Um, and then the, the the things get more absurd, and it's that question of, in trying to cure this young lad with your blessing, uh, with this witchcraft, of how silly and how um and also how sexual um you make it um and 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 how that that functions because um there's there's a virtuosity to all of that that's really really interesting uh, i've rambled on for quite a long time there thoughts from the room i uh, i actually going to rephrase what i said earlier because i hadn't picked it when i read it before but i I do call Mater a witch. I thought that was a throwaway term, but mm, no. perhaps, perhaps then um, the kid Telemachus has been sent because she's genuinely a witch and he's there for is genuinely suffering from a case of, of worms. Uh, and of course, witchcraft is there. So perhaps uh, to reappraise what I said, maybe Ulysses uh, is genuine in his kind of rapprochement, perhaps. Oh, I think he's still making yeah. fun of him. Um, but I think, yes, there is a genuine, your mother is a witch, can we utilise her services? I think that seems to be um, what's going on here. Mm. But I find what re works really well is that it kind of, um, sort of the, the first half of the play is sort of rather comical and then even farcical, and especially the way we stage it, like with the salad and everything. <laughs> and then there is kind of a bit more, um, there's a bit more sort of a serious element introduced with the soldier figure, soldier character. And um, suddenly I find we're sort of in, in that Seneca country 
um, with her, uh, like when she turns out to be a witch and becomes decipherable as such and really works her cure and makes him stand up again. I mean, it's, it, it's quite a, quite an explicit um, stage action and um, the command lie down and then stand up. And this is kind of, th this is um, at large what happens um, on a microcosmic scale in his mm. body or um, around his crotch. Groin. Mm. Oh, I, I, I think uh, it, mm. it's, it's definitely, it's definitely sexual. Um, yeah. um, but, but, but whether it's know. comedy, comedy uh, in, in its tone, whether um, um, it, it's, it's not quite the same setup, I think, as we were reading earlier. Um, and, and that this, this could be played in lots and lots of different ways. Um, I mean, you've got stones of Davis of stones could be testicle spear, hmm. of course, yeah. just a little bit further on yeah. several types, cherry stones. There's a lot of sexual stuff in there actually. And also, I think, um, having all these, um, objects on stage already, including that semi object, um, sort of animate object, the snail, um, and like the <laughs> And everything and the gibbet or no, not the gibbet but that kind of helmet thingy um and now it could sort of um metamorph into a different use of object or not a different use but um so same same um sorry how would you say uh, how would you say that um same grotesque use of um, objects um same grotesque dealing with them but um change of tone and I think that would be really interesting. Because, of course, we didn't mention really about talking about the the snail earlier. Is that uh, it's a uh, it's got horns. It's the the cuckold's horns yeah. element there, uh, which we didn't really uh, go into. Because um, it does. I, I mean, one of the things here is that there's there could be a really absurd um, or uh, or uh, grotesque uh, she, that she's basically riding him and getting more ecstatic as as we get <laughs> to the end of the speech because then Telemachus's next line um, has a comic payoff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it depends how 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 ridiculous um, you want to make this sequence. Um, the the that... mother's speech has got a lot of false endings in it. Mm. So mm. you you could. If you wanted to go to the farcical end, uh, you could keep on having him thinking that's finished and he's getting up and she starts off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grandchild of the worms, that soon thy pains be done. Okay. Mother Bryce of Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he sits up and she's constantly pushing him back down again. <laughs> yeah, it happens about four or five times in that speech. There's a sort of, mm. seems to be a structure with it. Yeah, yeah. Which is, so which is just very long sentences mm. and they end with this sort of invocation and then. She, she stopped, she adds another one on. Mm. So you've, you've actually really now made me go back to the sexual thing because if she is straddling him and kind of, forgive me for, for, better, for want of a better phrase, riding him the whole way she's doing this kind of incantation, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. It's also the question of, does she literally pull a worm out of anywhere? Um, <laughs> oh um, <laughs> so so she's, she's improvising to make it last. And yeah. that, that's where it yeah. kind of gets more and more ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's also the 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 stage direction. She must bless him from mm. above to beneath. That's a bit ambiguous. Mm. I mean, what what kind of blessing is it that she's performing? Mm. Mm. So I suppose ah. you've got um, there's a sort of a bit of a grey area between sort of cunning folk and a religious folk at this point, and there seems to be a bit of a a, a crossing over. Uh, between the sort of the, the religious aspect and the sort of mythical aspect. Mm. I mean, we can, we can go all the way back to Dame Sirith of being the sort of the wise the wise woman um, who who uses cunning and and uh, and her wisdom to uh, to uh, enable people to have sexual gratification. Um, mm. So there's 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 a there's precedence. There's lots of them. I think we've possibly gone into this more than we need to. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe there's still more to plunge. But let us carry on. So, um, um, can you just do the last two lines of your long speech there, um, having removed hopefully the worm <clears throat> from him, mate? Now, now stand up, little Telemachus, and then I warrant thee by tomorrow. The worms will be gone. I thank you, Mother. It 
in my mercy wise. <clears throat> Will you say to my father, command me? Oh, we're losing you, I'm afraid, sir. Um, are you there? Oh, dear. <clears throat> Sorry, can you just give us can that last slide again, again please? Yes, you're much better now. Oh, my gosh, unstable. I'll try again. <laughs> Now stand I up. thank you, Mother. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, no, go, you go. Sorry. Okay. I thank you, Mother, in my most hearty wise. Will you, sir, to my father do some service? Command me any service? No, pretty boy, but do thou us to commend to thy father and mother. Tell them that we intend, both my mother and I, to see them shortly. You should shall be heartily welcome to them, I dare well say. Fare you well, by your leave. Now I will depart away. Son, give me thy hand. Farewell. I pray God keep thee from peril. Telemachus goeth out, and the mother saith, With it is a proper child, and in behaviour nothing wild you may see what is good education i would every man after his fashion after this fashion had their children up abroad then many of them would not have been so naught a child is better unborn than untaught you say truth mother well let all this go and make you ready ulysses to go to with me anon be you so content? I am well pleased. To your will I assent, for although that I love him but have very evil, it is good to set a candle before the devil. Of most part of great man, I swear by this fire, lightest the thank, but heavy is the ire. Farewell, son, I will go me to prepare. Mother, God be with you and keep you from care. The mother goeth out, and Thersites saith forth. Whatsoever what so I say, sirs, I think ill might she fare. I care not if the old witch were dead. It were an alms deed to knock her in the head and say on the worms that she did die, for there be many that my lands would buy. By God's blessed brother, if I were not sick of the mother, the toothless trot keepeth me hard and suffereth no money in my ward. But by the blessed Trinity, if she will no sooner dead be, I will with a cushion stop her breath till she have forgot Newmarket Heath. Ill might I fare if that I care her to spare. About the house she hoppeth, and her nose oft droppeth when the warts she choppeth. When the she doth brew, I may say to you, I am ready to spew the drops to see down rain by all Christian main, from her nose to her name. Fie, God's body, it maketh me to spit to remember how that she doth sit by the fire, brawling, scratching and scrawling, and in every place laying oysters apace. She doth but lack shells. The devil have thy wit, have thy wit else. At night when she went to bed, she goes and plucketh off her hose. She nappeth me in the nose with rip, rap, flip, flap. And an ill hath come to that tap that venteth so, wheresoever she go. So much she daily drinketh, that her breath at both ends stinketh. That a horse come in and halts her, her soon up taught her till I say David sought her that shall never be that shall be it never mass which never shall be nor never was by this ten bones she served me once a touch for the knots I was sick and lay in my bed she brought me a kerchief to wrap on my head and I pray God that I be dead if that I lie any whit when she was about the kerchief to knit break did she one of the form's feet that she did stand on and down fell she anon and forth with all as she did fall she girdeth out a thought that me made to start I, I, I think her butter did smart except it hath be a mare in a cart I have heard such, I have not heard such a blast. 
I cried and bit her hold fast. With that she, nothing aghast, said to me that no woman in this land could hold fast that which was not in her hand. Now, sirs, in that whole pitch and fire brand of that bag so fusty, so stale and so musty, so cankered and so rusty, so stinking and so dusty. God sent her as much joy as my nose hath all way of her unsavory spice, if that I be not wise, and stop my nose quickly when she letteth go merrily. But let all this go. I had almost forgot the knave that here erewhile did jet before that Telemachus did come in. I will go seek him. I will not blin until that I have him. Then, so God save him, I will so beck knave him that I will make to rave him. With this sword, I will shave him. And stripes, when I have gave him better, I will deprave him that you shall know for a slave him. Then Miles cometh in, saying, Wilt thou so indeed? I thee, make good speed, I am at hand, ear press. Put away tongue-shaking and this foolish craking. Let us try for the best. Cowards make speech apace. Stripes prove the man. Have now at thy face. Keep off if thou can. And then he must strike at him. And Thersites must run away and leave his club and sword behind. O oh, thou lover, runnest thou away and leavest thy sword and club thee behind? Now this is a sure card. Now I may well say that a coward craking here did I find. Masters, you may see by this play in sight. Great barking dogs do not most bite. <laughs> and oft it is seen that the best men in those be not such as used to brag most. If ye will avoid the danger of confusion, print my words in heart and mark this conclusion. Such gifts of God that ye excel in most, use them with soberness, and yourself never boast. Seek the Lord of God in all that ye do, Social virtue and honour come you too. But if you give your minds to the sin of pride, vanish shall your virtue, your honour away will slide. For pride is hated of God above, and meekness soonest obtaineth his love. To your rulers and parents, be you obedient, never transgressing their lawful commandment, be ye merry and joyful at board and at bed, Imagine no traitory against your prince and head. Love God and fear him, and after him, your king, which is as victorious as any is living. Pray for his grace, with hearts that doth not feign, that long he may rule us without grief or pain. Beseech ye also that God may save his queen, lovely Lady Jane, and the prince that he hath sent them between, to augment their joy and the commons' felicity. Fare you well, sweet audience. God grant you all prosperity. Amen. 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 Um, and that is why we have a relatively precise date um, for Ooh. this, though epilogues by their nature are slightly more transitory, um, but uh, definitely mentioning uh, quite specific um, real life figures there at the end, king and queen. And and son, which is presumably uh, Henry, Jane, and uh, and uh, little Edward. Um, it's int uh, it does suggest the original setting or the setting that this comes from uh, is uh, in a youthful context. So it does suggest a school setting there very strongly, with this idea that there are kids and parents out there. Um, it feels very schoolmasterly at the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that that comes across very very strongly. Another shade of the four P's um, coming in here with uh, where in that play there's a story about a um, an explosive suppository, um, and it just that there's a certain crossover quality there. Um, uh, I, it's not exactly the same, um, but it just just felt very very similar. Um, it's, not that I think for a second it's it's got any real connection with John Hayward, but um, 
just just uh, felt uh, felt real real connection there. Um, can I thoughts ask, about is, the ending, then, people? Well, can I ask date wise? Are you you're saying is that supposed to be uh, Lady Jane Grey? I assume. Uh, no, no, uh, no, Jane um, Seymour. Uh, Oh, right. Seymour, um, oh, of course, it would be Henry, won't it? Okay. So, so, yeah. so, so is that Seymour, the uh, mother of Edward VI? Yeah. Um, so, so that epilogue is, is quite precisely datable, um, but that doesn't mean it's the original epilogue or, or, or it wasn't replaced and it didn't have a longer life. Mm. Um, but uh, it does give us a pretty, pretty close positioning. Um, and quite a few of the interludes from this time, which have some connection, uh, we'll do some sort of blessing to the king or queen, uh, whichever one it is. And it's really helpful for dating because then <laughs> you can you can guess which king or queen it is, or um, um, and uh, that that's that's really 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 useful. Um, and yes, it's nice to have uh, Miles coming back in again and immediately return returning gag from earlier set up. It's always nice to have a callback. Um, uh, and that's nice. Um, it's it's obviously it's a collection of stuff, and it's mostly very entertaining stuff. And and there's so much room for manoeuvre and play. Um, overall thoughts to the room. Anyone want to put their hand up and 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 uh, give us a crack? Any of our audience uh, want to uh, to pile in? Feel free. Um, we've got three uh, or yeah, two. Come two. on. <laughs> come, 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 come and join us. Uh, yeah, I, I can hop in. That's fine. Start some video here. Oh, we can see uh, you as well. Lovely. Yes, hello. hello. Hello, I'm Glenn. I am uh, over here in America where we talk funny. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, also an early modern scholar. So this is a bit before me, but I think really fascinating to look at the little bit of the blend that I'm seeing between the morality plays moving into the plays that the early modern period would have had you know we've got named characters and, and you know there's just a great sense it ends with that moral moral feeling um and if this was an interlude it certainly would have been you know it certainly seems it would have been farcical so i find that quite interesting to be sure um the the that you could certainly play this for a lot of different laughs i was listening to all talk about it and i thought that was like yep i could see that <laughs> so <laughs> So, I really like I definitely have to think that like an adult wrote this and was like okay I have to add in like you know the, the fart and poop jokes but then at the <laughs> end the the good guy has to come in and you know take the lead and like show what you need to be like this is how you need to be a good upstanding person and uh, this guy is not the person you want to be he may be funny but that's not what, what you want to be in real life there's, a, there's an interesting thing with Jack Juggler, which we've done on the podcast, where it opens with a prologue saying, this play is silly and harmless and it's not about anything at all. And then there's an epilogue where it's like the headmaster has suddenly watched the play and gone, oh, no, 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 there's a moral. There's a moral, people. There's the, the, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, don't, don't do this. It's uh, no, and, and there's some commentary saying that, um, you know, it felt good like to your mum. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been added by another author, but actually, I feel it sort of actually fits the play by being quite different. Um, because uh, Miles, as we were talking about the convention of uh, um, you know of a uh, of a boastful of the boastful soldier coming from classical um, uh, uh, ideas, but actually, mm -hmm. he's not boastful at all. Really, he's actually just a common sense soldier. He just sort of saunters on and goes, "Okay, where's the fight happening?" Um, and he's run away. Why am I here? Why am I here? <laughs> well, there is also just uh, you know. If a delay on mine, so. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um. Uh, go. Uh, uh, introduce yourself to us all. Me. Hello. Sorry. I've got a bit of a delay. Sorry for talking over anyone. Um. Can you use my headphones? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsies. Um. So is that Cheryl? <laughs> Or is yeah, it? hey. Hello. Um, yeah, so I, I can't act at all, but um, I'm an early modernist. So again, this is quite early for me, but um, like Glenn, I've, kind of, I've looked at moralities and allegorical drama quite a lot. So that's, yeah, there's been some interesting stuff um, in the play with that. But yeah, I found Malay's quite interesting with him being 
being like this common sense soldier who comes in just after this interaction with the snail, which is kind of weird and fantastical. But um, what was what anyone who's kind of more familiar with medieval stuff, I guess, to open it as a question. Um, I've probably because we've been stuck in the house a lot, but I've been looking a lot at kind of medieval manuscripts and stuff. There's lots of depictions of knights taking on snails, right, mm. in the medieval period. Um, so I don't know whether it's kind of, I don't know whether um, it's being put as this kind of fantastical ideal thing, which, you know, he totally fails at. And then you get Malaise coming in, who's a much more, I don't know, useful knight who comes in and kind of then gives you the common sense stuff. Um, uh, don't chase snails, you know. Um, I don't know. But I wonder if that might make sense of all the, all the to do with the armour. If the most notable thing about the snail, we've been thinking about the sort of, you know, the horns waving, but maybe, maybe it's the armour and maybe there could be some sort of theatrical play with that. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just wondering. It's a worthy uh, adversary because it's, it's got its own and field or whatever. Yeah, kind of like you were talking about. Sorry, go ahead. No, you were talking about like the um, staging of the hiding scene earlier as well, and like him getting under the dress. It's almost like a snail shell there. So there's this, com there's this kind of maybe repeated thing of him like getting mm. into a shell of some kind and mm. him being more like the snail than the knight. I don't know. Mm. I was wondering, I don't know if this is just me, uh, this is me just speculating wildly, but I wonder if there are any, any hilarious English uh, ribbing of the French in this case. That's why it's snails. <laughs> uh, I suspect not, but I'm sure we could make it work. Um... I mean... I mean, that wouldn't be unheard of for them. That's not that far off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just thinking contemporaneously, absolutely. You never know. I mean, and also, as far as mythical beasts go, the snail is not the most intimidating thing we could have seen. So to, to, to interpose a, a creature that largely hides when it is poked at is saying something about the main character as well, yeah. that it is afraid beyond belief, you know, that, that Thersites is afraid beyond belief. Mm. Um, well, it, it, and you, uh, uh, Charles Wright, there, there, there do seem to be uh, shared on Twitter a lot, um, you know, random, random uh, manuscripts with just these, do well, they're not doodles, but, you know, they're, they're, they're images of just people fighting snails. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And where, I don't know where that comes from uh, at all. Uh, but then we, there's a lot of medieval imagery where we don't really know where it comes from. They're just a lot more playful than... Um, than people used to think, I think mm. is the way of putting it. Um, <clears throat> um, the, uh, the, one of the problems we have if we're looking back mm. is of course we don't have much secular <laughs> storytelling or drama surviving. We know it's there because we have little bits and pieces um, and we know it's going on, but we don't have any of the of, of the material sort of directly uh, certainly in terms of drama you know we've done on the podcast or almost have done pretty much all of it um you know uh, um and and it's sort of we, we 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 get these things turning up uh fully formed and printed in the very late 15th early 16th century oh there it is. holding up a snail <laughs> hey <laughs> um so it, it's it's also it's not just coming from a uh, from a medieval um, you know uh, sort of a god show um, angle um, you know th there is, there would be there there would be some element of tradition here of of random events random comedy things uh, that this play is structured about um, that we can only sort of ghostly see um, am I wildly running on that run by the way or does anyone disagreeing with me. Um, is that a reasonable it feels, it feels like a collection of sketches. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, it, can I, well, this might delve away from secular drama. Um, mm. And apologies for the little echo. Um, but I, I'm wondering why uh, the major has that little uh, go between, between witchcraft and then mentioning God and Christ and, and having that little go between between Christianity and witchcraft. And I'm wondering... Is there an intention, or is that just there's a character that's a witch, but she's also Christian? Um, well, the two um, pieces that we've done 
Um, there's Dame Sirith and there's a fragment of a very early play called Interludium de Clerico et Puella, which are basically the same thing. And it's the same story. And Dame Sirith is a sort of uh, wise woman figure who uh, is uh, called upon to uh, help someone uh, have sex with a married woman. And in that, when he turns up first, she professes to not want to go through with this because she is a good woman. Uh, oh, 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 I'm, I, 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 I say my creed. I'm very, very good and godly. Then he hands her money and goes, that's fine. No, I'm, 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 I'm up for that. I'm, I'm, I, I have cunning. And though she's not displayed as an active witch, um, there is that sort of connectiveness of, it's a question of, if you are engaged in this kind of practice, do you have an outward sign of piety and does it all get mixed and mashed together? Um, that, that's the only sources that I know of that feel analogous um, because we've worked on it. So I may be overstating that one. Um, no, that was, that was what I needed to hear. I was just <laughs> curious. Um, yeah. I had no idea, like, again, because my, my knowledge is based, like, um, in the time, uh, like, gosh, like, late 16th century, so this, this is like, oh, this is a bit of a whole new world, so, um, no, thank you for providing that knowledge. Well, uh, I mean, what we've done so far with the feed, the, the podcast, um, and you can see it on the, to some degree on the website, um, and the, the list that I emailed out to everyone, if you look on the list, uh, anything in green and orange has been touched upon. We've covered a pretty broad spectrum of stuff up to about 15, 30, 40. We've actually, this is filling in a, quite a big chunk of near continuous looking at plays. Um, and that's why I'm feeling a lot more confident about talking about the potential connections between plays because we've done them in some way like this or, um, or as full cast audio adaptations. And that interconnectedness seems to be, seems to be quite important. Um, uh, the other problem, one of the problems also is we don't, I don't know, um, all of the, the, the French connection, um, or the other continental connections, certainly storytelling. There's a lot of stealing of stuff from France and other uh, other uh, relatively close but water distant um, countries. Um, and I I just don't I know I know of, but I I, I don't have the the detailed base to be able to say where the other influences, not just the classical one, because this one is obviously littered with classical. Uh, learning that they've learned at school probably um, and that it would probably as Stephen said earlier have some connection with their, their lessons. It's not a debate heavy play there are a lot of plays that are very debate heavy and connected with the kind of rit rhetoric and rhetorical teaching that they might have had um, that's what John Hayward was, was doing uh, in the plays that survive um, they're very very idea heavy whereas this is much more just knock about farce um, and maybe by the same person who wrote them, um, may have written Jack Juggler, which we've done, um, and oh. is um, and feels very, very within that school of thought, if nothing else. But may I just say something? Because yes, I, oh please, I, I'm talking I, too much. Dis <laughs> no, no, dis I slightly disagree from just listening to all of us and um, so sort of reflecting on what I felt when I was speaking. Um, mm. This character. Or, speaking on Alliance, um, that it's kind of moving through different genres, though they wouldn't have had genres in that way. But so it could, could have been really used as a discussion of what is comedy and what is, um, what is the serious or um, maybe not, not directly tragedy, but and at the very end sort of that epilogue, um, like the, the break to the epilogue, which you've just highlighted, um, I think that's something that could really be um, explored in rehearsals and mm. you could use the whole, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of just out there and you could um, almost shout everything you say <laughs> in that play. But um, on the other hand, it's also about um, metamorphosis of objects and um, yeah, of, of the tone of the voice. That's quite interesting, I find. 
Hmm. And oh, I wonder, I, sorry. Yeah, um, no, no, carry on. Yeah, and I wonder what um, other interludes are like in that respect. Um, in what, in the sort of epilogue, um, uh, not epilogue, um, sort of episodic, um, but, yeah. but also sh uh, shifting through genres as well. Um, I should be able to answer that better because I'm sure there are one, uh, certainly, certainly with later plays, the question of tone is so tricky. Um, I don't know about plays of this era. Um, I mean, there's certainly, issue, I mean, actually, if we're talking about Jack Juggler again, which I, I must apologize, keep mentioning uh, a thing we did for the podcast. Um, Cause that's a story basically of, of a servant who gets the living Jesus beaten out of him. Uh, Simon here. Um, uh, after having his life stolen, um, another servant comes along and pretends that he is him and, and, and just not only beats the crap out of him, but also gives him a massive existential crisis. And on one level, it's, yeah, it's a fun knockabout farce and the, the blows probably aren't real and they're probably not really hurting him. But on another level, it's horrific. Um, and the tone of that, we really, it was quite difficult to edit that and make that feel uh, flow. Um, and, and where you place that and, and the journey you take. Um, I don't know, um, I, or I haven't as of yet done anything that's quite so openly episodic as this. Mm -hmm. um, though I'm, I, and I'm sure with uh, five minutes I can go out and, and rustle up a few examples. Uh, any thought, anyone know of any really good episodic -y things? Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to leave uh, at that point. I'm so sorry, but uh, right. it's been a total pleasure, everyone. Thank very you nice for the sight you. Is, uh, Thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you everyone. I will see you all Ta anon. See you anon. Thank you, you Simon. Thank you. Enjoy Thank the rest so of the discussion, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See ya. If I figure Does, out how he to doesn't do want it. to leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comic <laughs> exit. <laughs> he is at least silent. Um, so yes, um, uh, and, any um, thoughts about that? That <laughs> episodic nature and tone uh, in the room. It reminds well, me a bit of Night of the Burning Pestle. Yeah. Mm. Where, yeah. where they, they basically yeah. get Ralph on stage and go, do this set piece, do that set piece. And, yeah. he's, and he's making them himself. He's creating that too. Like yeah. the entire tone of that is we shift back and forth between these two stories, but it's all, we're trying to tell one story. Well, that didn't work, so let's go another way, right? I mean, that's, I think that is a little bit of this too, for sure. Uh, so, oh. go right ahead. Uh, uh, well, the, the virtuosity point as well, I think, you know, that some of the, yeah. uh, those, those kind of two long speeches with all the kind of uh, alliteration in them, you know, mm. they, they, could, they could be a Victorian patter thing, which sort of speed up, you know. Mm. Uh, and that reminds me, you know, R R Ralph in, in Pestle is, is partly a, a celebration of the sort of virtuous city lad who can improvise anything at any time mm -hmm. and cope with anything mm -hmm. that's thrown at him, mm. theatrically. You know, he can create a scene straight away. Uh, and it, it, it feels a little bit like that in the sense that, you know, nobody's going to be getting too fussed about um, whether we're in Act 4 or Act 3 of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, no, sorry. No, I apologize. Sorry. No, sorry. I'm just actually going to blab about a thing I did because um, I wrote my thesis on Pestle. Uh, Glenn knows all about that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of like the different characters Rafe portrays, like the virtuosic knight, the buffoon, and just it just goes on and on. And it's very reminiscent of that. Um, that's the end of the thought. Just wanted to throw that. <laughs> Lovely. Um... And, and anyone else in, got any any additional well, f thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 one one thing that I that we were talking so much about that epilogue, it, it brought me back to looking at it, and it's really interesting that um, metrically after Thersites leaves, the rhyme meter changes just briefly, instead of being you know A A B B whatever, it's you know it goes away behind say fine 
and that I mean it doesn't stay that way but I, I just do find those changes quite interesting in terms of like we're going to change now the tone has been this and we're going to go over here and do something else entirely which is you know give you the message we're trying to give you so for whatever purpose you're talking about you can I think you can always point back to the language and just say how did the language shift it to mm. um, not just what was on stage but you know how stylistically does it change within the language Yes, because so. you've, you've got some very short lines uh, with the, a lot of the patter stuff um, and, and metrically it's doing all sorts of different things um, constantly. I mean, there's no, there's no regularity to, to a mm -hmm. lot of this. Um, and, right. and, and he's doing it for effect. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not that the, the author did not know how to do it. Um, it's doing <laughs> it for a purpose. Um, and... It's very plausible, of course, that it's written with actors in mind, um, you know, that they know um, who the performers are and playing to their skills, that they know societies can do a patter. Um, uh, they know that the actor who's doing Miles can do a, can do, is, is probably a big, big strapping chap, um, whereas the societies probably isn't. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And, um, and, and, and can play to strengths. Um, and um, whereas uh, the uh, Telemachus is probably the, the least boy that can play um, uh, within the company, uh, which is... I am uh, trying to make the company as deep as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's a, that's a quote from um, the stage direction in, um, uh, in uh, The Play of the Weather by John Hayward, where uh, the, it literally is, there is a small boy who arrives at the end and is it's listed in the script as the least the, uh, the, the least that can play and I'm sure it's either <laughs> either they they're they're not very good or they're very small uh, or both um, <laughs> about five years old and just comes out and shouts everything and he's really <laughs> cute really cute um, uh, which would make that even more absurd and and grotesque um, depending on and that gives a question for what what the mother does. Um, and I think the, the point there about there is so much to mine here in a rehearsal context. You know, we haven't even really got to grips with all the games that could be played. Um, you know, the, the, the angles, the, 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 the aim usually with a modern production is to try and find a journey that perhaps they wouldn't have been so concerned about um, and trying to find a certain consistent logic. Um, I think it also it's really important to not just assume it would have all been far either. Mm. Like, I think that's our, our, our modus operandi. We go to that and we say, well, this is absurd. So it's gotta be as big and farcical as possible. Mm. And, and I don't, I, I think that certainly that can be true to a point, but I mean, they were still, you know, trying to be entertaining. Um, in, in as many ways as possible. So, so farcical works, but it might not be the only thing that was going on. Mm. Cause as, as, as Stephanie was saying, um, um, uh, earlier, you know, just uh, what, what are the, 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 the images and the, the themes and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and what each one could be saying individually, but to complement or contrast with, with, with each mm -hmm. other. I mean, I think that's. I mean, how, how used to, used to stage comedy were people at this point? Because I suppose there was a, there was a bit of a, a schism in the Catholic Church of whether comedy was something acceptable or whether it was something, especially if you're dealing with some <coughs> some sort of you know morality, uh, would would people use you know, the idea of allowing an audience to laugh, saying this is fine, you can laugh at this? I mean, how, how far along were they at that point? I don't uh, know. I I think very, um, and I think they yeah. always were. Um, there is certainly in a lot of morality drama, uh, mystery uh, drama, there are comedy characters who are, it's theologically almost important that they are, are, uh, are so. Um, so like, uh, Joseph in, um, in, uh, we've been looking at the in town, uh, sequence. It is vitally important that Joseph is an impotent, useless, incompetent person <laughs> because there is absolutely no way in hell he is allowed to be able to have sex with his wife <laughs> and the play it's, it's almost a several play sequence of just going there's no way in hell this poor ill lame 
uh, impotent man is, and and the the comedy there is is actually theologically vital um, to what the playwright is trying to to put across. The rest of the play is deadly serious. All those plays are deadly serious yeah. and played absolutely uh, straight and with uh, wonderful music. Uh, but that character is pure farce at times. He's on his back, whining like a schoolboy, going, I don't want to go into temple, leave me alone, I don't want to get married, no. <laughs> um, and, and it's absurd. Um, so in the right context, there's always detractors as well. I mean, there's, there's plenty of people who've hated any kind of ludic activity full stop. Um, and it just, just it, so I, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's omnipresent. I think it's on the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Someone contradicts me if I'm talking out of turn. No, I think, but I think that's super important too because these plays, you know, and then moving into the later traveling plays that were kind of the precursor to the big stages, you would just see these plays had to be able to go up anywhere. Yeah, they would have been performed in halls and they would have been performed for dinners and, and, and nobles and fancy people, but they also could have been done on the back of a cart in the middle of the road, you know if that was what was needed. Um, and so you had to have, I think, ideas that would appeal to all types of people because you never knew where you were gonna make a little bit of money so you could eat that night. Um, so it's just really important, I think, to remember like, tonally these had to have at least a little bit of shift even if they largely stayed in one vein throughout the whole thing, so, yeah. It certainly struck me during those long speeches where uh, you've got all the different reference points being made, and like that really easy way to be maintaining your audience attention right because you can you, know, you can imagine again you were talking a bit um before robert about like if the plays are put together knowing the cast if you've got someone who's really good at just going up to audience members and being like you're this person now and you're this person like I think that anywhere the reference points that you know are going to appeal to multiple crowds and, mm -hmm. yeah um and, and in a sense uh the scripts that come down to us seem to be you know fixed points in a, a lifespan of 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 the play so the play we did yesterday hick scorner um is a snapshot of a play that's sort of based on the play we did the day before youth which is another snapshot of that play and we know that hick scorner we have a pretty good idea that that went on and became a tourable and touring production so even though these things have their genesis, perhaps in a very specific event for a specific household or a specific uh, institution or a specific time, the, the afterlife can be quite long. Um, and, you know, we don't know what happened to this play, you know, outside of the suggested first performance that we've got here. Uh, you know, in, in, uh, the mentioning the king and, uh, and, and queen and, and the, the young infant. Um, so, you know, that, that touring is start is already happening now that, you know, these, these plays are brought into being to entertain, uh, specific crowds, but then they end up, um, going on the road, um, more and more. Well, late, later interludes are, are published with cast lists, mm. you know, saying this may be played by six and that kind of thing, aren't they? So yes. there's, a, there's a very definite kind of industry mm. side to all of that in terms of how, how these things get printed. I was just looking, I, I didn't have a chance to do it, but is, is there a gap between the date of performance and when it actually makes print? Uh, I can probably find that out in a second. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head if there was um, anything. Uh, do talk amongst yourselves while I hunt for that. Um, <laughs> um, they're printed about 20, 30 years later uh, in uh, all of the plays I'm looking at in this particular volume. So, it, yeah, uh, it looks like it's, it's not appeared for a while. Um, and, of course, there is uh, additional internal doubling, because I'd assume that tele, uh, Telemachus could be doubled with, uh, with uh, the Smith at the beginning, uh, which mm -hmm. would make sense. And who's, who's, who's playing the snail? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is an important, an important point. Um, um, yeah, and also actually talking about printing them, you know, when it says uh, four can play this uh, play easily and, you know, you read it and go, no, they can't. <laughs> so sometimes the printed plays might be lying about how easy it is to, to perform the texts as a marketing thing. 
um, oh. that's, uh, which is uh, rather fun. Uh, have we run out of steam, everyone? <laughs> have, have we any more to say? Or shall I, shall I stop the recording and before we do uh, sort of uh, outgoing uh, admin? Yes, do that. I will do I that. Right. Well, in that case, I'll do my final, final farewells. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for, for viewing this, uh, this particular uh, episode of this, uh, this little series uh, during this time of plague. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's been reading uh, with us uh, this evening. And I hope you can uh, follow uh, some of the links that will be in this video anon. But otherwise, thank you very much and good night. And now I wait a few seconds to press stop because it cuts off the end of what you say.